What is up, YouTube and Instagram followers? Alexander here with High Winds EDC. Today, I will be doing a disassembly of this guy right here. Um, I'm also going to be giving it a little bit of a small makeover. What we're going to be doing is a backspacer swap. So originally, it comes with a titanium backspacer, which is totally cool, but we got a very special one. I have the flash on so I can hopefully give you guys like the natural light in the room is coming from my back and um, it's not really good. So I don't have a lot of really good natural lighting at where I'm doing this right now. So please bear with me. I hope you excuse, excuse the flash, especially whenever it reflects off of the blade. It could be a little distracting. So uh, if you guys go with it, we'll, I'll go with it. This very special backspacer was provided by a Mr. Stephen Stewart. I was able to meet this gentleman on in, on a Facebook, a Facebook group. I saw some of the work that he did. Give him a follow. This is Gecko Customs Knife Works. So super cool. Give him a follow. He does a lot of really good custom work, especially on some of the Riot made knives like Pena's and um, these Chavez's, Shabai. Chevronis, I don't know. Anyways, so let's get into it. Um, I will be using my Journey Tool Co. Taurus and a T8 Weeha bit. This is Gunny Glide. And then of course, I will be hitting it with blue Loctite to seal it all up and get everything in play. So some of this stuff may be off screen. If I am using it, I will show it to you. But right now, let's try and get it apart. I also have this little setup just in case I need to catch a, a screw in, with a magnet or if I need, if there's a, an exceptionally tight, uh, let's see, it's gonna be, is it free spinning? I can't remember. Yes, this is free spinning, but I am able to, for the most part, catch it with my finger. This is a free spinning pivot. Um, but I, with, just with the amount of pressure I put on these, uh, on the back side of this uh, pivot screw, I was able to break it loose, so that's good to go. Let's try and break these ones loose as well. Uh, these screws on uh, that keep backspacer in place come all the way through. You can vaguely see it right there. I'll try and bring it a little closer, right there. So they go all the way through, and that's honestly one of my favorite design choices on a lot of knives. Just be very careful because you do not want to um, cross thread these screws, right? <laughs> so it's already wanting to come off. The, the spring that the frame makes is wanting to go ahead and kick it off. So that is good. This is a very easy disassembly so far. So we're taking it off that side. I'm going to continue to pinch it together. And I'm going to continue to take off these... Uh, secondary screws and this is all T8 which is another really good design choice having uh, your uh, main body screws be made entirely of T8 that's a good thing less likely to strip a screw head and less likely to cross thread because you'll have more of a purchase okay so it's going to want to fall apart we're going to flip it around good thing this isn't like a shark lock because then you'd have to there we go we're pulling it apart. As you can see on this side of the scale, you have your detent ball right here. You have your uh, over travel stop right here. This is all good stuff. Uh, you have race washers right in here. That's so that the uh, the, the ball bearings do not, um, you know, ruin the inside of your titanium. So we're going to lift the blade out. This is really fun sometimes <laughs> it's sliding out and just give it a little bit of lean with it rock with it and that is off right there we'll leave the space the this is not a spacer that is a ball bearing washer okay cool so yeah and here's your stop pin stop pin this is your pivot and then you have your other washer here backspacer already came off this is what we're going to be replacing very beautiful i can easily have this sent off and customized into a cooler pattern so i can have a little bit of uh, customization but we're going to go ahead and set this here 
we're gonna take out our very special one and I'm gonna do something very special with this one. Um, something that I like to do with my Hoback Radford. It's also in a very beautiful Mexican blanket by Carta. That's what this is made out of, it, uh, Mexican blanket G Carta, uh, as it's known. This is just to add a little bit of color pop. Uh, I'm very proud of my Latino heritage. Um, I'm a Chicano to say the least, but here's what I'm gonna do. This is really cool. I got this with my setup, my Journey Co. Tools setup. This is a sir, super syrup lubricant and it smells like maple syrup. So what I'm gonna do, using a little bit, just a little bit, a little bit goes a long way with this Jicarta, a little bit of dabs of, G of this syrup flavored lubricant. And look, it's just gonna make the color pop so much more, especially if right here on the spine, just rub it in with my fingers, okay? I put a little dab right there, and then I'm just gonna kind of drag it back. And this is just to give it nice color, and uh, as time goes on, it'll dry out, it'll start to look a little ashy, but we'll just reapply a little bit more, and that is a non-issue, okay? So there we go. This is what it's gonna look like on, ultimately as a replacement backspacer. Excellent. So let's get into cleaning the actual knife. I'm going to move this out of the way. I have my bit driver right there. Let's get to cleaning it. What I like to use, these are old cut up pair of jeans. It's got a nice texture. After being washed so many times, there's not a whole lot of lint that can be left behind. Um, and then I also use this. This is all I was able to really purchase. This is 91% isopropyl alcohol for cleaning of the blade and the inside of the scales and the washers. So here we go. I'm gonna add a little bit off screen so I don't pour it all over myself or all over the table or countertop. So that's what's gonna do the trick for now. We're gonna start with the blade. This is really exciting, guys. I'm very excited to finally get this set up. Uh, eventually, we will move this to the garage instead of the kitchen counter, but you know, everything is a work in progress all the time. Uh, a lot of people can relate to that. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna clean this area right here try to clean up the blade a little bit more a clean blade is not necessarily uh, something that I'm like always in high regard for but it does make a nice video and it does make a nice picture on Instagram because uh, let's face it we all do it we all like to try to be amateur photographers for our EDC stuff I will apply a little bit of rubbing alcohol here just with a little bit of a twist got my finger knurled in there a little bit and I twist and then clean the rest of the I think a canvas cloth would work a lot better than how I do this now okay so but uh, the denim jeans work very well um, then I'm gonna try and I'm taking off this back spacer I'm gonna clean it a little bit try and get some of that residue off of it making sure I'm not gonna lose any of these pieces because that would be a total bummer. So there it goes. And this is pretty dirty. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you guys. This is a secondhand one I was able to purchase off of Facebook. Guy said, uh, you know, claim to not have a whole lot of uh, time with it. Um, I believe him because this is a very, very nice blade. It did have a little bit of blade play. Ah, this fell out. Putting the pivot back in after I cleaned it. Did I? I don't think I cleaned the inside of this, so let's go and get this. Remove whatever lubricant that uh, uh, Riot decided to put in here. Take a little bit of that off. That race washer is still in place. That's good. So I'm a little disorganized, but you know, everybody's like, oh, method to the madness. We will not be putting any lubricant or cleaning uh, this uh, stop pin right here, whatever you call it. Uh, placeholder pin that's going to stay like that we will wash our washers there we go so i just rub them in my fingers uh these bearings work fine for me i'm not a big uh i don't i don't subscribe to the idea of putting in skiff bearings or anything like that um these will be more than sufficient for me and my uses in my for my whole life um i think the surface area of some of the uh, skiffs and the um caged bearings are, are cool but I don't know if it's gonna necessarily it, it, it's the the curve of diminish, diminishing returns that a lot of us hear in the knife community so 
However you feel about skiff bearings is how you feel about skiff bearings. We're gonna take this, put it into place. Hopefully we can get it right where it needs to be. So that's ultimately what it's gonna look like. This is really exciting. Sorry, I would zoom in a little bit more, but I want to try and, here we go. That's at 1%. Sorry, I do move this a lot. Um, so yeah, very beautiful, very, very pretty. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some of our gunny glide, make sure this blade doesn't kill us. Slit our wrists or fingers or anything like that. Going to take some of this gunny glide and I'm gonna apply very little Gotta make sure that this pivot doesn't come sliding out. This one doesn't have a, uh, that might be a little bit too much, but you know what, we're gonna run with it. I do put the bearing side flush up against the blade, especially since uh, this part is more flush than the reverse side. This is an open-ended side right here, as you can see. And I make sure that this part the flat part is going to be facing the blade since the blade does not have a cutout. You see, there's no cutout, there's no milling, just the racetrack and whatnot. So yeah, there we go. And we will take the blade. We'll put a little bit on the bearings. Hopefully it's not a lot. Because you know, I did put a lot on the other side. There's that. There's that side. And then I will put a little bit on the stop pin. I don't know if there's a... I don't know if that actually helps anything, but that's what I do. So yeah, that's already smooth as butter. Smooth. Won't sing for you guys. There's that. I'll put a little bit of lube right here. A little bit right here, and then I'll drag it back. That might be way too much, so we're going to try and take a little bit off. It's okay, guys. This is all okay. There we go. Ah! Stupid applicator. There's enough there. Okay, so that's already very smooth. And we're gonna flip that around. We're gonna put a little bit on this side. You can see for the most part. Sorry, I'm gonna have to take a step back, clean my applicator. Ah! Clean this side again real quick. But yes, we are just trying to make money moves, y'all. Cleaning off the applicator one more time. Here we go. Perfect amount, I think. Maybe a little bit too much still, but it's all right. Uh, you just don't want to gum anything up. That's your main goal. Then I'm going to take this side. Uh, I'm going to just try and get it to fit. That's the main goal here. Boom. And we are there. So what I'll do next is I will start my pivot. So that way everything gets held together as far as the blade and the washers. There we go. Not tight. There we go. I might actually have to use this um, with another T8 so that way the, the pivot doesn't spin freely. We're going to try and reverse this side. Try and keep everything in line and we're going to try as hard as we can to slide these all the way through. Boom. That is gorgeous. I will show you guys the final product there we go no that doesn't feel right there we go no that doesn't feel right at all I don't like that at all don't want to strip these screws like I was saying so we're gonna try this one for now I wonder why maybe I have these maybe, let's try something real quick let's take this one out Let's take this one out and because it's already starting to feel a little too tight for my comfort level be careful because disassembling your knives may void the warranty and that feels a whole lot better cool so sometimes you just got to play with it man um you know i work with a lot of nuts and bolts at work <laughs> we'll work with a lot of nuts anyways screw this one real quick just a little bit give this a little bit more play there we go cool and that is going in very comfortably that's what we like and I'm pretty sure if I would adjust the pivot just a little bit more that would have solved a lot more of my problems so there we go
a little bit of a gap on this side so I can screw these in a little bit more. My wife just walked in, so give me a minute. Hi, honey. I know. And I will not be applying any Loctite to the pivot. Oh man, oh look at that. It's already so smooth. Oh yeah, beautiful. Like I said, forgive me for the uh, light refraction. My flash is on and here we go. Centering is okay. I think we're getting very close to actually hitting the backspacer, but just enough away. Let me see, right there. We're just enough away from actually hitting the backspacer. Um, backspacer, backspacer. So, yeah. That was the disassembly and backspacer swap. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, beautiful. Wow, I think this is my favorite part right here. This part is really nice and clean. So yeah, it's just gonna add a little bit of a color pop to this uh, very monochrome knife. Um, this, I wanna have it sent off and have like a bronze green finish sent to it, uh, but I'll be reaching out to somebody else for that. Okay, so let's check the blade play. Zero blade play, blade rock. No, nothing. And that's just Riot's quality control. Like they just do such a good job on their quality. Um, I have not sharpened this knife yet. Do I plan on it? Probably not. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. The action is just so smooth. Like I said, I will not be applying any thread locker on this unless I feel like there is a, uh, a reason to. Alright guys, thank you for watching. This has been a disassembly of the Chavez Street 4th um, generation and the adage of a Mexican blanket micarta backspacer. Look how gorgeous that is. Alright y'all, thank you for watching. Y'all have a very beautiful day. Bye now.